Hello everyone, I'm really pleased to be here today. Uh, really nice office, by the way. Uh, thanks Full Blue for uh, hosting this uh, awesome meetup. Uh, and yeah, today I'm going to be talking about component libraries, specifically with uh, React technologies. And uh, we'll talk about how to build your own component. We'll see some examples of other component libraries. I'll also go through some patterns that would help you building uh, truly reusable and uh, pickupable com components. And uh, of course, some tooling that will uh, help you be more productive as a developer and uh, as a team altogether, affecting your product and uh, building uh, great, great things and pushing the production out there. So as Paul mentioned, uh, I'm working at Liberty Global, which uh, is uh, father of uh, Zigo and previously UPC and uh, many other holdings across Europe. And uh, we're building few projects there actually. So I'm building uh, the one which is isomorphic React application, the Flexible, uh, which was flexible uh, just because out of the box it supports uh, the isomorphism. Uh, but of course, it could be done with uh, uh, other solutions, uh, which Paul mentioned before. And uh, the other team that is building uh, the second project that we have have around 25 uh, front end developers building like an operating system for our setup boxes, also using React, Redux by the way, and uh, WebGL, so also quite exciting. And uh, I'm also an author of Source.js, uh, which I call uh, a style guide platform. Uh, this is the uh, Node.js application and a set of tools that helps to organize component libraries using different technologies, not only React, but also uh, different kind of kinds of uh, templating languages, like uh, Jade, Slim, are supported there. Also CSS documentation, is, if you're uh, familiar with, uh, is also supported there. And uh, I also show some demos uh, based on solutions that, that we combined uh, using other tools out uh, from the community, which is really huge right now. And uh, yeah, talking about community, uh, there are already a huge amount of different uh, components ready to be reused and uh, which are open source. Uh, some of them are mentioned here. Basically, these are the most noticeable and uh, probably the best examples of components and uh, publicly available component libraries. Uh, raise your hands if somebody uses some of the tools that are present on the slide here. Uh, one. All right. <laughs> That's cool. Then uh, my talk will, will be actually useful for you. Uh, so yeah, uh, so yeah. Let's then first define what is a component library because it could be uh, a bit confusing. So it's better to be on the same page uh, with that. Yeah, and by the way, if you have some questions to me, you just uh, pop it up right away. I'm okay with uh, uh, being interrupted a bit because I have enough time. I, I practice thirty minutes is too too much for for this talk actually. So feel free to interrupt and uh, ask some questions uh, during the talk. So, uh, what uh, is a component library? So, first of all, it's a set of reusable components. So, as soon as you start reusing some uh, bits of your code, like uh, building some uh, templates that could be used within different parts of applications, you can say that you're building sort of a components library. Uh, but, of course, to define a more mature way of uh, defining a components library, there should be some additional bits, like you should be able to search actually for your reusable code. For example, if you're pushing your reusable things, reusable libraries to NPM or Bower, uh, you can use search that is available by, by uh, but that is provided by the NPM infrastructure, or you can also come up with your own searchable solutions. And of course, uh, the most important thing for UI component libraries is that uh, they should have some uh, rendered component examples so uh, UI developers could visually see what they will get after uh, reusing the code, after uh, calling some of the dependencies that you have in your components library. And this is basically uh, one of the best examples of how UI component library looks like. This is the most popular React-based uh, set of components, which is uh, called Material UI. Uh, we'll switch now to a website itself. So, uh, as you see here, there's a list uh, on the left with uh, different components that they have. Uh, all of them are having uh, all included together with styles and functionality. 
And this is basically uh, the best implementation of Material UI I've seen so far, not only uh, within React, uh, just because they have all these nice things like uh, uh, bubbling and uh, hover effects and animations that are really following the Google guidelines uh, for for uh, implementing the material UI. Also, uh, as a, uh, on the presentation page, you can see the, the code examples of the rendered component uh, above it and some documentation of the properties that you can pass to it. Uh, pretty much similar is, uh, for example, done with Polymer components. If somebody has been on Polymer Summit quite recently uh, in Amsterdam, uh, they were showing uh, really a lot of interesting stuff, and they also have a really powerful components library, uh, which is uh, really composable and it's actually really easy to create, like a full application, just drag and dropping some uh, components, uh, just because uh, a lot of developers and Google. Uh, puts a lot, a lot of efforts and invests a lot into development of those. Uh, let's look at other examples of uh, component libraries which are React based. So here's uh, another one uh, which is mostly about uh, generating markup. So it has uh, less dynamics in it. Uh, but it's a nice thing that uh, we always have to choose, uh, we always have some uh, choice basically. We can choose our more functional components that are available out of the box or we can just choose something as a baseline, only with uh, markup and some basic properties that you can then enhance and uh, make uh, more personal to your project. Also, uh, quite popular is to share just standalone components. So one of them is React Select. Basically, this is the most popular uh, which I found. This is a select box, which may seem uh, is nothing special, but uh, this box is really powerful, so basically with only Providing different configuration, you can get or uh, select box with fuzzy storage, like uh, with all functionality in it, or just uh, regular select box uh, with all key bindings available and uh, with all accessibility in mind. And yeah, of course, there are a lot of other examples like Bootstrap, which also was present in the presentation, but uh, uh, we won't have time to go through all of them. And uh, here are some uh, names of the component libraries in the show. I will definitely share my slides so you will be able to click them through and uh, investigate by your own after, after the meetup. And uh, this is the reason basically why component libraries and why uh, people, why component libraries are there that important and why people are using it, why uh, they are sharing and, uh, their efforts, sharing their knowledge. Uh, just because uh, I doubt so that any of uh, companies that we are working in have a uh, development department of only front-end developers that are uh, counting around like 200 uh, developers. And an example with Material UI, there is more than 200 contributors that are improving those components each day. Uh, of course, uh, there may be also some issues, but uh, since it's quite mature uh, library already, you may be confident that if you'll take it, it will be really well taught and uh, all the things that we usually don't have time for, like accessibility, all the keystrokes, all the key combinations available, it, it is possible just because of the collaboration and uh, uh, the, the open source community. So basically, because of that, and because of it's quite natural to decouple uh, UI components and reuse code, uh, the approach of componentizing the web is really powerful and it's uh, actually not that new thing uh, but right now we're experiencing some really big hype around it because of web components, Polymer, React which is uh, uh, by its nature built for doing some reusable UI components and uh, during the preparation to a talk I was uh, viewing one of the first presentations from uh, core team developers where one of the first slides where it was mentioning that React is a library for building uh, reusable components. So, uh, which actually uh, is really true and this is what we see uh, how developers adopt it and how they uh, build applications with it. Uh, we'll start with a few patterns that uh, will define uh, some best practices uh, which will help you building reusable component and, uh, components and making them actually uh, easily implementable into other projects and making them uh, isolated and so on. 
so in React world, uh, the most commonly known probably pattern is so-called container components, uh, or you can also call it uh, or distinguish component types to uh, smart and dump. So uh, the smart and dump term was uh, initially brought uh, by Dan Abramov, who is uh, an author of Freedoms, by the way quite clever guy and he's uh, really putting a lot of his own effort into React community and pushing everything forward. forward. And uh, he's also now changed uh, his uh, thoughts and he basically switched the idea of defining container components uh, which are doing uh, uh, the data fetching and uh, state information passing to all its child. And the childs are basically the dump components which don't have any logic, which uh, doesn't trigger any actions. They just receive two properties, some data from the parent components. So this helps to decouple the uh, presentational layer from so-called controllers uh, on UI. And this also allows to easily take off any dump component and use it anywhere you want, just because they're not coupled uh, with any data fetching mechanisms and uh, overall project architecture. And this is an example of just a simple dump component which doesn't do anything, just retrieves some properties and uh, draw itself, draw some marker. And another thing uh, which uh, I consider as uh, one of the big, biggest influencers uh, in the React world uh, for, the, for building a really powerful component libraries is uh, the thing that first needs to be, first we need to uh, give some precaution. And if uh, uh, you were viewing the this, this slides from uh, Christopher Chadao, he had this a really, really uh, great talk about the thing that I will mention on the next slide. And first of all, uh, that he was uh, defining is that you need to forget everything you know about web development uh, before uh, you uh, will, before somebody will try to basically push your idea of uh, this horrible thing like uh, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, as Paul mentioned in previous uh, talk, uh, HTML and JavaScript could uh, feel a bit bizarre. CSS and JavaScript could feel even more uh, bizarre actually. But uh, if you'll check out the slides from uh, Christopher Chadao, he really explains it and uh, defines why it's important and, and how it's solving the real life problems also in Facebook where he works. So basically, CSS and JS uh, greatly helps to isolate the components, and this is the thing, the, the missing part that uh, now uh, allows to basically with one line include any of reusable components, and you will be done. So if, if you will just do in time install and then uh, require material UI button or toolbar, anything you name it, uh, you will have everything from scratch working uh, as we saw on the material UI web website. Comparing to other solutions, which are also taking place, like uh, uh, Element uh, UI library, they don't doesn't use the inline styles. Uh, they use uh, external CSS, but it makes it a bit confusing because you need to additionally include CSS, include it into your pipeline, write some additional config for your Gal ground file or for Webpack. So it's uh, from one side a bit scalable, but from other side it it uh, lowers the accessibility and UX for the developers. Here's just an example of uh, how inline styles looks like. I won't go uh, deep through them. The idea is uh, really basic. Uh, you write CSS in, as a JSON object or as a JavaScript object, and then you apply it uh, to the component. And uh, with the latest uh, libraries that helps to manage this thing, like Gradium, uh, there is everything available that you love from CSS, like media queries, all the pseudo elements like covers uh, and uh, before after pseudo elements and so on. Uh, basically these are the three top libraries that allow us to uh, use inline styles and uh, solve some problems that you might have with it. Of course, not all the projects uh, will be, uh, for not all the projects it will be the best choice, but from, for, for some stuff, especially for reusable components, it's uh, a nice thing to have. And uh, React style, for example, is done by our developer from Liberty Global. And it, this is the only one that helps to extract the styles that you define in JavaScript into a static uh, CSS asset that could be delivered separately on client side and cached properly 
which could uh, greatly improve the performance, basically. And the second big topic is uh, tools. So basically, with tools, uh, we are uh, we are able being productive, and actually, we're uh, okay with spending some additional time on making uh, a nice interface for the component, making a bit, putting a bit more effort uh, so that other developers could actually enjoy using those components. And tools, of course, helps us to save a lot of time. And one of the uh, nice approaches, which is uh, now really growing in the community, is an approach of defining some workbenches for uh, developing components and developing some UI. In React, for example, the workbench usually uh, following the uh, current demand, uh, workbenches usually include some overload stuff, which was also mentioned uh, by uh, Paul previously. Also, uh, within Workbench, you can have uh, really nice things that uh, allow you to focus specifically on your code and, and uh, component uh, instead of switching from terminal to browser to ID to whatever you name it. Uh, and let's go for a small demo uh, to see how basically it looks like. I have already a running here uh, example of uh, React Workbench. I hope it's uh, easy to see here. I, I try to zoom it a bit. So basically, uh, this is a small CLI uh, which doesn't have anything uh, extra. It only has uh, everything you need to start with. So when you do the init, basically when you bootstrap your own component, you get a really really basic component uh, and uh, the stuff you see here in uh, in the folder. And uh, let's start it here again and switch to the browser with the example that you get after after running the uh, CLI. So basically this is the Hello World uh, basic component that you get uh, after bootstrapping and the workbench itself uh, allows to uh, just put your editor by side and get all the uh, changes instantly in the browser. So basically the first load was a bit more slower so if we'll with a second load, it's almost instant. And uh, with this in place, uh, all we need is actually to have just browser next uh, to, to, to the editor. And without any refresh at all, we can view all the changes of the UI. And also this kind of support bench just really helps to focus on the component and uh, treat it as a isolated, uh, isolated thing that could be then, of course, easily droppable into any other project. Also, of course, you can uh, create a new components here. You can uh, uh, import more CSS files, and everything will be done automatically right next in the browser. So it's basically an evolution of uh, live CSS reloads, and instead of refreshing the whole page as browser sync, for example, does. Now we're really able to do a hot reload. Zooming a bit up, uh, what is the workbench? Because it's uh, quite important uh, pre-work the next demos. Uh, it basically allows to easily set up the work environment uh, without being dependent on uh, the structure you have in your production application. So for example, you can have uh, totally different technologies in your product production application, uh, but uh, with Workbench you can have this hot reload just uh, like snap out of the box without being worrying about how it should be shipped and how it should be combined with production or development build. As I said, focus on decomposition because it could be focused uh, on, on components itself without having any external uh, environment dependencies in the environment at all. And yeah, advanced tooling, as we already saw. Another uh, thing before the biggest demo I will show is the another great thing called uh, component playgrounds. I will show a demo it a bit on a project a website. Uh, Basically, uh, this defines an example of uh, rendered component and the uh, code of the component itself right uh, next to each other. And uh, in this example, this is a code meter editor where you can actually also develop or just at least play with some properties, changing uh, inline styles as they are here, or changing some properties, or even changing a markup. So if I'll do something like this, it will automatically update uh, right next to the example. Uh, it's 
a bit strange why it's not still available on Material UI, for example, because it would be great uh, to right away check if documentation is not lying and if it's working properly as promised. And it's quite a powerful tool also for those who uh, like uh, in-place development, or for example, you probably all know Coldplay, uh, which is a great sandbox for trying out new features. So basically this is the same thing, but composable into any environment uh, you want to have it in. So putting all together, uh, we will now go through uh, another tool, which is actually a combination of all the ideas, all the best from the community, and which is available just like Snapple, so with the PM install and the PM start. Uh, I already have a running example here, and the link to the project itself uh, will be available with the slides and, and the uh, last slide as well. So basically what we have here in the structure is a basic set of files. I will also open it in Finder and zoom a bit like this. So basically this is the place where we are in. Uh, it's called SearchJS React Bundle example. And uh, nothing special here, just uh, packages on the dependencies. And in specs we have two hour example components. So basically after running the application with npm Start. After a bit of time, uh, we'll get a landing page with all your components listed. So as we saw on the file system, I had two components there, so uh, they're also present here. Uh, as I said, component library uh, won't be useful at all if uh, developers won't be able to find there anywhere, anything. So basically, uh, you can uh, put uh, the structure of catalogs the way you want, and also the uh, search is available here as well, so you can uh, find the same placeholder component or bundle component just with fast search. And let's uh, now uh, drop in into a component demonstration page. And what we see here is basically uh, part of the things that are already demoed. So the, the same editor right next to a component example, which is automatically updated just like this. Uh, with, with the same uh, power uh, as the, the component playground have. Also, a really interesting part is the automatically generated uh, properties documentation. So in this case, this table is generated out of the code, uh, just parsing the properties that React component could, uh, could handle and uh, some uh, definition of uh, types that you can pass to it. Uh, pretty much similar is available with JSDoc, so JSDoc could also uh, automatically be uh, converted into some HTML documentation and put them next to your component examples. And the uh, examples that we uh, see here, and basically uh, this is the whole idea of uh, uh, component libraries, of, sh of showing some uh, usage examples of the component that you have uh, for everybody else to use. Uh, you can list everything into one single page with just different combinations, you can list not only simple components like button, you can place a uh, whole container of components which consist out of tens other nested things. And uh, the same thing with, yeah, uh, the example you see here is generated out of a simple uh, Marvel file which is uh, laid right next to a uh, component in the source files, so we'll, we'll see it here as well. So basically, uh, the component itself is consisting of uh, the source files, which is a JSX uh, React uh, template file, and uh, CSS, which is included through Webpack. And the readme uh, is the place where you define the component examples, like this. So pretty much standard uh, markdown. Oh, sorry. Pretty much standard markdown uh, with the only few custom things, which is the tag for including the generated documentation. It's here just because uh, we, we think that should, you, all the users should be flexible about uh, whether they want to show some generated stuff or not and where they want to show it. And uh, another thing that is different from regular markdown file is that you just define a language JSX uh, for the code block that is used for the, for the demo itself. So here you can also do the changes and everything will be automatically uh, updated on the page. Same goes if we will uh, change the 
component code. So this is a JSX file, button JSX file, which represents the button that we're seeing here right now. So here we can also do some changes and uh, they'll be just instantly pushed into the browser, which is uh, um, like ideal implementation of approach called living style driven development, because besides uh, component libraries, the thing that I'm showing here also could be called as a living style guide or button library. There are actually uh, different kinds of uh, names for it. And also an interesting part of it is that uh, I mentioned before that with workbenches, you basically don't need to focus on anything else rather than editor and browser. And um, how it usually is, if you have some error, you need to check console, you need to uh, check the text, uh, the error message, uh, understand what it does it say, uh, and, and then go to back to the editor to fix it. Uh, with this thing, for example, uh, we could have something. I was not broken. Let's play here, like this. So if you will have, come on, it's, it's unbreakable. Yeah. So if you break it here, you can just see uh, the the problem right next uh, to in the browser automatically reloaded. So if you'll fix it, it will go back again. The same goes here. If I'll try to break something here uh, with this. Thing, for example, we can also have the inline uh, things right away, which is also pretty convenient and pretty powerful in terms of uh, crafting, handcrafting your own development environment specific for your needs, for your company needs, and so on. And uh, another big thing, uh, the last thing that I want to demo is the ability to extract any component example and show it in isolation, where you can proceed to development. And also you can just switch any template which is wrapping the example component itself for uh, testing uh, responsiveness, for example, or just putting your component into your environment. So you can just define a layout of your project, like a home page, where uh, there will be a block for your component testing. And uh, yeah, uh, the demo and everything that I showed is just available with uh, one command run. Uh, it's specifically built, the bundle itself is built for React, but it's also possible to build for any other technologies. And so make a bit up. Uh, building own component library right now, uh, following and using the modern tools, is uh, not a hassle at all. So you can just drop in a few folders with your components and you'll get a nice organized components library with live examples and uh, a lot of automatically uh, things done for you. And of course, uh, powerful tooling for development also available. And I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot more of things like hot reload, which is drastically changing the approach of how we build things nowadays. And before the last slide, I also wanted to uh, mention uh, one thing that uh, we're thinking of doing this year, or actually next year, sorry. Uh, we're thinking about uh, creating uh, a small React conference, React specific conference, like full day talks with top notch speakers. Uh, just of curiosity, uh, if Amsterdam will hold some React conference in spring, who will be interested uh, to join in? Just raise your hands if you're uh, interested. It's cool, yeah, it's great. Really, really inspiring because since we're now investigating the other thing, we need to make sure that we won't fail and uh, uh, it, it, it's possible to get it happening. And if you uh, have something to share, you have uh, uh, interesting projects, uh, you have some interesting uh, investigation results, uh, just catch me here or after the presentation, we can just discuss it and uh, uh, plan you in the shuttle. And uh, here is the promised uh, link to the project that I was demoing at the end. Uh, so this is uh, BitLi, SourceJS loves React. Uh, a short link for uh, for the bootstrapping project you might use, and yeah, all my contacts. So feel free to reach me uh, during the day, during the night, with questions on Twitter or uh, by email. I'll be happy to help you with uh, everything, especially with the, the things that I'm building and for open source. And uh, thank you for your attention.